Welcome back to Seeing Jesus as He Really Is. This is written by uh, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. This is the reading of chapter 11. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, currently, we also have the Believer's Authority. Uh, so if you want to check that out, it's on there. Um, this is chapter 11, <clears throat> page 114 in the book. We're about to get started. This is entitled, entitled uh, Jesus, Our Great Physician. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. That's Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Uh, Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. No matter what the need, whether it is uh, provision, forgiveness of sin, or healing of the body, Jesus always met it. And I want you to know that Jesus is the same today. He still heals as readily as he forgives sin. But often when, he, when folks accept him as their savior, they do not accept him as their healer. I remember when I first found out that Jesus was my healer. When I was five years old, I noticed I had a lot of warts on my hands. So I went to my father and said, Dad, I've got these warts. And he said, Son, we can pray for that right now. My dad prayed with me and he cursed those warts. And within three or four days, every single one of them dried up and fell off of my hands. Can you imagine the impression that it left on a five-year-old child? I knew that Jesus healed as a solid fact. I'd seen it. When I was about 13, my pastor had gotten into a theological argument about healing. He was teeing me, um, probably meant telling me. Uh, he was telling me that God sometimes put sickness and disease on you to teach you a lesson. And I was telling him, Pastor, that's not true. He got kind of angry. I said, it's not true, Pastor. My Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's James 1.17. And he got mad and he stormed out of the house. The next morning I woke up covered in spots, measles. I was shocked. My pastor came around the house to gloat over my sickness and I was... I was sick now, and obviously God was going to teach me a lesson. He walked to the door and said, How are the sick and diseased? And I said, Oh, I'm not sick and diseased. He said, Yes, you are. You're covered in spots. No, Pastor. I said, These spots are not here for me. They're here for you. The Bible says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. These spots are for you. I'm healed by the stripes that Jesus bore for me at the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. See 1 Peter 2.24. Again, he got mad at me and he left. I went into my room, closed the door, took out my Bible and spoke the word of God out loud. And I said, Jesus, you are my healer. I don't care what he says. I don't care if he thinks this is on me to teach me a lesson. You are my healer. The next day, the spots were gone. They had disappeared. When he came back that day and looked at me, he said, what happened to the spots? FedEx. <laughs> I said, I told you they were, they were, uh, I told you they were just there for you. You have to come to a place where you accept him as healer. People in America don't have to believe God for their healing because they know they've got the blue cross or the red cross or some other cross to run to uh, any cross except the cross of Calvary. But what happens if all the health care and all the insurance fail and the doctors cannot help you? Well then, I'll have to start believing God. Is God your last resort? Too often we don't receive Jesus as our healer all the time and suddenly we come to a crisis and say, oh, I've got to believe God. Well, if you can't exercise your faith over small illnesses, if you can't exercise your faith over a spider bite or a flu, then what are you going to do when they diagnose you with cancer? Then you're going to go to pieces. I don't know what I'm going to do. You have to exercise your faith to build your faith in the fact that Jesus is your healer. I'm not 
saying that you mustn't go to doctors or use medicine. There's nothing wrong with that, but they can't heal everything. You have to get it in your heart, in, the, in your heart of hearts, that Jesus is your healer, because in the future, there could come, there could be some deadly incurable plague that sweeps through. What are you going to do? You better practice now. You better develop your faith in Jesus as your healer now. <clears throat> it's easier to believe God when you're healed and walking in divine health than to wait until you're in a mess and trying to believe God for your healing. You have to get up and tell your body to get in line every single day. Body, you're going to get in line with the Word of God. Sickness and disease, you have to go. Jesus is my healer. Once, when my appendix was giving me tremendous pain, I told the Lord, I need you to heal it now. I'm here on your vacation, trying to rest. Or I'm here on vacation, <laughs> trying to rest. I don't have time to mess with this stupid thing. I'm not going to go run to a doctor so he can stick a knife in me. You are my healer. You have always been my doctor. You are my healer and always have been. I need your help. I need it right now now i spoke the word over me over my body even as i lay there in pain on the bed when i woke up after two days of this the pain was gone i started weeping and said yes you always have been my healer haven't you where do i go when i'm in trouble who do i turn to who do i run to jesus why because he's my healer for too many people uh Far too many people base their faith on what happens to other people, and that's a big problem. Well, I had an uncle who believed in God, and then he died. And my Aunt Minnie, she was believing God, and she had a stroke. And Uncle Jack, he was believing God and got hit by a bus. So, you see, we shouldn't really believe God. Listen, you can't go around basing your faith on what happened to Aunt Minnie and Uncle Jack. You've got to base your faith on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith not someone else's experience. The Word of God is true. You have to line up with the Word of God. You can't go basing the validity of the Word of God on what happens to me or anyone else. But we still imagine that there are limits on what God can do. Can He forgive sin? Oh, oh yes. Can He forgive murder? Yeah. So you're telling me that Jesus can forgive all manner of sin, but there are certain sicknesses that He cannot do anything about? And you'll just have to go see a doctor? Hold it. When we repent, he forgives, us, he forgives us of all of our sin. He washes us clean. And Jesus put sickness and sin in the same category. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes within themselves uh, said, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to the house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and they glorified God, which had given him uh, such power unto them. That's Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. King James, obviously. Uh, Jesus is saying, I can forgive your sin and I can heal your body. Your sins are forgiven, so take up your bed and walk. Have you ever noticed when Jesus was always uh, would always say to people when he had healed them? What he would always say to people when he had healed them? He said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing comes on you. See John 5, 14, John 8, 11. Why did Jesus forgive the man of his sin and then tell him to take up his bed and walk? Why did Jesus repeatedly connect sin to sickness? Because the root cause of sickness, catch this, the root cause of sickness and disease in the earth is sin. 
Sickness and disease were not a part of the Garden of Eden before Adam sinned. Sickness does not come from heaven. It comes from the sin nature in man. Now somebody is bound to say, are you trying to tell me that if I get sick then I'm full of sin? Nope, I never said that. I'm just showing you that sickness has its root in sin, in the sin nature of man. Of course, there are times when people do get sick because they're in sin. For example, if a person has a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness in their heart, it affects their body. If they have a violent temper and they, they're angry all of the time, that's going to affect their body. The Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Proverbs 17, 22. We've got people with broken spirits and their bones are so dry you can hear them creak. Because Jesus linked sickness and sin, it's easy for people to get upset because they think that we're saying that if somebody is sick, then they're in sin. But I never said that. Again, I said that sin and sickness go hand in hand and sickness has its roots in sin. If you could get sin totally out of the way, you'd remove sickness completely. Sin and sickness are the foul offspring of the devil. Jesus says, I can do uh, it all the same. It's not a problem to me. I'll forgive your sin and heal your body. In our services, we see people come down to the altar in the healing lines and start asking God to forgive them. The moment they repent of their sins, the healing power of God just floods their whole body. Sickness is not God trying to teach us a lesson. What happens if you've been sick for 40 years? Are you trying to tell me that you're too stupid to learn the lesson of God trying to teach that that God's trying to teach you that's uh, theology gone crazy to see the true origin of sickness we need only look at the ministry of Jesus described in Acts 10 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with them with him Jesus went about healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. So that means sickness is the oppression of the devil. That's what the Bible said. Sickness is not a blessing from heaven. Sickness is not God trying to teach us a lesson. What happens if you've got, if you've been sick for 40 years? Are you trying to tell me that you're too stupid to learn the lesson that God is trying to teach you? That's theology gone crazy. It's like we just read that. We did. Hmm. Said it twice. Uh, Hebrews 13.8 says that uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that means he hasn't changed. That means that if he did it in the Bible, and in the Bible days, he's going to do it today. If he was the healer in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then he's the healer today. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep, but of the house of Israel. And then she came and she worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not uh, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, but be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. Don't get distracted by Jesus comparing the Canaanites, who were longtime enemies of the Jews, to dogs. What you have to realize is that he said healing is the children's bread. It's our birthright. It's not something that we have to beg for. 
Just as your children have the right to eat the food on your table, healing is your birthright from your heavenly Father. Healing belongs to us simply because we're in the family of God. We can come sit at the table of our Father and we can eat of the bread of healing. Hallelujah. The first... <laughs> <laughs> the first reason Jesus healed the sick was that it was promised in the word of God. Jesus was fulfilling the word of his father. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were oppressed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Matthew 8. 16 and 17. This is uh, Isaiah 54, 4 through 5. Here it goes. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is thy name is his name and thy redeemer the holy one of israel the god of the whole earth shall be he called shall he be called sorry mailman now <laughs> second jesus healed the sick in order to reveal his will we saw this in mark uh, chapter 1 verses 40 through 42 he was willing and there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, saying, Unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst uh, make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Jesus never turned down anyone who asked him for healing. Even the uh, Syrophoenician woman, Jesus delivered her daughter because of her persistent faith. Third, he healed the sick to manifest the works of God. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest. Fourth, Jesus healed the sick because of his compassion. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. That's Matthew 14, 14. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them, and said, What will, that, what will ye that I shall do unto you? What do you want me to do to you? And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Matthew 20, verses 30 through 34. And um, now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and he and she was a widow. And much people of the city uh, was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Stop crying. It actually says, Weep not. And he came and touched uh, the bier and they, the casket, and they uh, that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up in the casket, and he began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Hallelujah. Luke uh, 7, verses 12 through 15. 
And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. That's Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 36. And the fifth uh, area of healing is that he healed people because of their faith. The centurion in Matthew 8, 5 through 13 said, Lord, you don't have to go anywhere. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus marveled at the faith of this man who was not even an Israelite and declared that his servant was healed according to what he had believed. In Mark 5, 25 through 34, the woman who had the issue of blood believed she would receive her healing if she could only touch Jesus' garment. Jesus did not notice her touching his garment until he felt the anointing flowing out of him and into her, drawn, drawn out by her faith. Jesus told her that it was her faith that made her whole. Is healing always the will of God? And it came to pass. When he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. That's Luke 5, 12 through 13. Many people in the religious world pray, Lord, if it be thy will, heal sister bucket mouth. Lord, if it be thy will, heal brother doodad. But we know from God's word that healing is the will of God. We need to settle this issue in our hearts. Yet some folks say, if healing is God's will, why doesn't everybody get healed? That's like saying, why doesn't everybody get saved? Are we going to throw out salvation because not everybody gets saved? Even though people turn down salvation, it's not going to stop me from preaching salvation. Even though people might turn down healing, it's not going to stop me from preaching healing. Salvation and healing are set in the gospel. They have been paid for and purchased by the blood of Jesus and by the stripes that he bore at Calvary. I don't understand why some people receive their healing and some don't, Rodney. Well, there's a lot of things that we don't understand, and every case is different. There are reasons why you don't always see instantaneous miracles, but I'm not going to debate why one person is healed instantly and the next one isn't. That isn't an issue between that that's an issue between them and God. I'm not going to go for it like God will heal No. I'm going to go for it like God will heal every single person every single time and that that we pray for them. If I didn't believe that, I would never pray for the sick. We have to remember that God's word is true regardless of our personal experiences. Well, that, well, what happens if we pray and they die? If they're born again, they're going to go to heaven. Death for the child of God is a blessing. The only ones who have a problem with death are the ones who are left behind. But if they are believers and the person who died is a believer, we do not mourn as though... Uh, as those who have no hope. See 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. We know we will uh, be together for eternity. Is healing God's will? There are several phrases that I want you to note from the ministry of Jesus. He healed all, that's important, that were sick. That's Matthew 8, 16. He healed them all. Matthew 12 and verse 15. He healed their sick, Matthew 14, 14. As many as touched him were made perfectly whole. See Matthew 14, 36. Even though Jesus went to Nazareth, he could not do mighty works because of their unbelief. He still healed some people in other places. He usually healed every single sick person in the place. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all of Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those that were lunatic and those that had the palsy. 
and he healed them. Uh, Matthew 4, 23 through 24. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. Matthew 8, 16. But when Jesus knew it, he drew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. In Nazareth, Jesus healed a few sick people of minor ailments, but could not do mighty miracles because of their unbelief. And in other words, mentioned above, he healed and delivered everyone who had came to him. What was the difference? It was not Jesus. It, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The difference between miracles and no miracles was the faith or unbelief of the people. So, which do you want to believe God for? <laughs> Good question. I believe God to heal everybody. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't preach. I believe that the day is coming soon when people will come into the presence of God, crippled, broken, bruised, tattered, and torn, and every single one will be healed. Every single sinner in the house will get saved. Every single backslider in the house will come back to God. And everyone who is possessed or tormented by demons will be gloriously set free. Do you need more? Look at uh, Matthew 14, 14 again. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. And how about Matthew 14, 34 through 36, which says, And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they went. They sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were healed and made perfectly whole. I didn't write this. Matthew did. Look at a little further at Matthew 15, 30, verse uh, 15, Verse 30 through 31, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered, when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God, the God of Israel. Now down to Matthew 19, verse 2. And great multitudes followed him, and he, and he healed them there. Go to Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Here's the bottom line for healing. You have to believe the truth of God's word and hide it in your heart. You must have your faith built in God and established in the Lord Jesus Christ as your healer. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Amen. That's uh, Psalm 125, verses 1 through 2. You've got to get it into your heart. Jesus is my healer. Even if... Those are the last words of your mouth on your deathbed. It's better to go saying, Jesus is my healer, than just capitulating and going out filled with doubt and unbelief, saying, maybe he's my healer, maybe not. You don't know what, you don't know that you, you don't know that you won't be raised up from your so-called deathbed because you would not, you would not give up on God's promises. Okay, you say, Jesus healed back then, and it's wonderful that he wants to heal today. It's also wonderful that he's the great physician. But how in the world does this relate to me? Friend. <laughs> Friend, that's where you've got to grab hold of what I'm saying and realize that the Bible is not talking to anybody else. God is talking specifically to you. His word is for you. Are you born again? Are you washed in the blood? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Then healing is yours. Healing belongs to you. Healing is the children's spread. And you are God's child. Healing belongs to you. It's yours. 
It's your birthright. It's not something you have to pay for. It's not something you have to beg for. It's yours. You have a new physician today, and his name is Jesus, MD. Hallelujah. Maybe you have already been healed, but you wonder, how can I walk in God's healing power all of the time? This is an easy one. Start praying for the sick. When you pray for the sick, you activate God's healing power in your own life and it becomes a living reality to you. Make a point of finding somebody who's sick and lay hands on them. God healing, God's healing power, the same healing power that went through you to them will start quickening your mortal body and become a living reality on the inside of you. I guarantee that if you make this a way of life, you will walk in the revelation that you are healed and Jesus is your healer. Hey, that's chapter 11. I look forward to seeing you on chapter 12.